Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to present you the strategic approach to updating the UI library, including all the challenges and lessons learned during that process. My name is Luke, and I'm a software engineer at Callstack. I'm contributing to the React Native paper from 2017 and maintaining uh, that library from 2021. In the meantime, I became an author of uh, over 100 merged PRs. Uh, some of them I even merged without the review and still don't have a YOLO achievement on the GitHub. And I'm a former contributor to the WordPress Gutenberg editor. As you may have guessed, updating process, we apply to introducing the new material design generation called Material U into the React Native Paper library. But uh, what is the React Native Paper library for those who miss that? It's a cross-platform UI kit library containing a collection of uh, customizable and production-ready components for React Native, which are following uh, Google Materials design guidelines. If you are wondering whether it's worth to use that, let me present some benefits. Paper is a great solution for creating an, an app prototype or MVP, where you want to mainly focus on the logical layer and visual layer is just provided. It's kind of wasting a time to, uh, to craft and style the same components like buttons or inputs from the scratch. Uh, what's more, those components can have different brand colors, uh, since theming uh, system is built in the library, which can be additionally tailored to their user needs. Uh, we, do, we do our best to provide components created for everyone, so we take care about the compat compatibility with the screen readers and also right-to-left languages. Those three aspects uh, pay off in development process acceleration and rapid time to the market. So we can say that paper is a product, but it's also a solution uh, in product process creation and definitely can help startups or enterprises. Three years ago, I wrote an article about it and it's still valid. So if you would like to dive more into that uh, aspect, I recommend you to check the Callstack blog. Quick look at the statistics. Since uh, the library is constantly maintained and developed, we have over 400,000 monthly downloads, nine and a half stars on thousand stars on GitHub, and one and a half thousand merged commits. I think uh, it's about the time to present you how those components looked in Material Design version two. In the meantime, if you would like to uh, check components on your devices, you can download the app from the stores using those QR codes. On the left side, uh, there is App Store. On the right, Google Play. Um, don't worry if you miss that, because it's also on the second slide. Um, I recorded a video of uh, a couple components, such as button, bottom navigation, uh, floating action button, dialogue, and also present the typography. Pay special attention here to the uh, bottoms navigation tab color and ripple effect. Uh, floating action button uh, shape and, and height. Also dialogue radius and the number of the uh, typography variants. Okay, and time to present the, the future. So Material U comes into play. The current video is presenting exactly the same components, but adjusted to the latest material design generation. Except for the colors related changes, we can observe new components types, for example, in button. Bottoms navigate, bottom navigations uh, tab doesn't have candy colors and triple effect, but received new animation. Uh, in the floating action button and dialogue, we can notice refined height and shape. 
What's more, uh, we added an option for uh, dialogue, dialogue icon at the top of the content. And the typography currently uh, does have the 15 variants. And everything presented so far, you can find in the React Native paper version 5, which is introducing Material U, the third and the latest material uh, design generation providing the new visual style. Hey, Lou, did you really say everything? Yeah, that's 100% true. The present is the result of the past and the future, which means that both material desi design generations are supported. In the example app, after opening the drawer, you can observe there is a switch, which toggles material design version. After turning it on, uh, you can switch back to material 2 and compare how components have been changed. For example, you can observe how uh, floating action button uh, group animation has different configuration and uh, backdrop color. At the beginning, when Material U uh, has been released, we received um, different and divided personal opinions about new design generation. Uh, however, it was clear for us, for our team, that paper would certainly support it. Uh, we decided to support both versions because we can, because we have really solid team which could handle that. Because changes are mostly concerned visual aspects follow, followed by API changes, so it was definitely possible. Because we believe it's better to have a choice. It's up to user which uh, material, material design generation fits more into user's product or needs. Because it's easy. Wait, what? Well, it's definitely not easy. Easy can be multiplied two by two. But two versions multiplied by three platforms multiplied by Two themes multiplied by two writing direction, left to right and right to left, multiplied by number of components and their variants cannot be easy, especially when it comes to testing all possible scenarios. But don't worry, it's fine. Impossible is nothing or sky is the limit, so we managed to do that. It was, a, it was quite difficult and complicated process. So what was the motivation? You and your happiness and satisfaction from the library. You, the community, and all the users who can have a choice and will always receive the, uh, the, the updated version with fixed bugs. At the same time, we wanted to provide better stability and uh, by limiting the release of many breaking change versions. OK, time to go through the update process. And uh, how did it actually go? Everything started on the internal workshop, where with the team, uh, based on the available resources like new documentation and Figma kit, we were able to discuss uh, the components changes, plan and organize the work, and prepare the process strategy. We also ordered some uh, food from Uber Eats because we think that we think better on a full stomach. By, by the way, if there is someone from uh, Vault, Glovo, or other app, you can contact me. Next time it can be your advert. Just kidding, but uh, Uber, Uber, Uber Eats didn't support us. On the same, on the same meeting, we set a couple uh, principles. At first, we planned the branching strategy. So we decided to keep everything on the new branch called Next, which at the end, after rebasing, will be renamed to Main. Since we agreed that two versions will be supported, we decided to add new property to the theme called version, thanks to which user can define which material design generation should be applied. We wanted to keep everything in the same file covered by iPhology. So we introduced some kind of indicator called ESV3, determining which version is currently used. We are not fans of this uh, iPhology and we consider different approaches, However, that one fits the most for us. 
The last principle on our to-do list was highlighting props changes by adding an annotation such as deprecated, supported, or renamed. In the next step, we went through the each component and marked the most important differences in form of comparison table. Uh, first two columns indicates differences between version two and three. The documentation already did that. However, we were considering them uh, from the codeways perspective, what you, can, what you can observe in the last column. For the instance, buttons hive uh, has changed, so we had to adjust spacing in the styles. Next change is related to, to the text within the button, uh, which in V3 is using sentence case. So from the code perspective, we had to add a default value uh, for uppercase prop based on the theme version. Since in the theme, there is a property called roundness, which indicates the roundness of common elements, we had to introduce some kind of appropriate multiplier uh, in button component due to the border radius change. Several components received new uh, variants or modes, so we were discussing how to adjust their naming. Basically, we were looking for some, com some compromise between material design, documentation, and our code base. Based on the button example, three new types were introduced, elevated, field, and tonal. Since field type replaced uh, what was previously known as contained button, we decided to stick to that name because we were using it before. That's why also field, uh, field tonal received the name um, contained tonal. Based on the collected data, we created uh, a task for each component. Changes were grouped in three sections. First, called new for the uh, things like new modes, si sizes, or variants. Second, for differences between versions like animation configuration, border shape, or elevation. And the last one called to check uh, for, the, for the aspects we were not sure at that moment and required more investigation, like whether specific components should have or shouldn't uh, have the, the shadow by default. Before the work over factoring components has been started, we refresh the uh, text stack by updating the TypeScript, Expo, and navigation. All right, time to adjust components to the material U. We started from the core parts uh, and fundamental components. The first one were theming and typography. Our first idea was to have exactly, exactly the same design tokens which are used in Figma kit However, we decided to replace the kebab case in, in favor of camel case. I mentioned design token, so let me quickly present you what it is. Basically, design token is the key representing the small repeated design decision which, which creates the design system visual style. Tokens can replace static values such as hex codes for colors. For the instance, the background color of that presentation slide is called uh, primary container. At the same time, it's the uh, primary 19 from the color palette, which represents some kind of specific hex color. Color of the uh, text is named on primary container, which is primary 10 from the same color palette and also replace some, ki um, some kind of uh, hex color. Represent, sorry. Um, design token can be also used uh, for types case, where under the key, in our example, display large, there is an object with couple font styling properties. Once theming and typography were done, we are uh, focused on crucial components, which are often the basis for other components, so surface and touchable. From that step, we were refactoring all the components one after another by applying styles following the Figma kit. And uh, uh, I have to say that I consider myself as, uh, let's say, pixel-oriented developer, so I made sure several times that everything was in its place. However, I, I, can, I could miss something. But once styles are applied, props are refined, it's time to cover new things by unit tests and manual testing on the real device. If manual testing presents some kind of issues, 
we applied the fixes, and finally were able to open a PR. In the meantime, we refreshed the paper landing page and docs to support props annotation. The last phase was mainly focused on PRs review and testing. Um, the receipt for that step is not complicated. Start from asking other teammates for a review and testing, then receive the feedback and adjust the comments. Remember to take some, some time, some mi couple minutes for the final testing, and then in the glory, press merge button. Last piece of the puzzle and the most exciting moment is releasing the first release candidate version. So time to party. But wait, wait, hold on. A few hours later, you are receiving the first issue related to the release candidate. And I have to say that it's even more exciting moment because, because that means that someone tried new version. Let's quickly check how to migrate from V4 to V5. By following the uh, material, uh, by following the migration guide, which you can find on the paper documentation, if you want to keep Material Design 2, you have to, what you have to do is pass the theme version as a prop to the provider and import the built-in types for Material Design 2 and apply a global type change. But if you would like to try Material U, you can use default Material Design 3 theme or adjust your custom uh, color palette structure since, um, since theme has been changed. Currently, palette contains a set of few of five colors, key colors, where primary, secondary, and tertiary are grouped into the accent colors. Um, the second group of the colors are neutral and neutral variant, used for defining surface or background roles, as well as specifying high and medium emphasis text and icons. Uh, the last one is used for errors. Observe the typescale property replaced fonts in the theme. So currently, typescale object contains 15 possible variants. It's the result of five rows multiplied by three display styles. Each of them contains, contains five font style properties. So uh, in case you had custom fonts variation in Material Design 2, there is a need to adjust it to the new typescale structure. Last step is to check how other components SBI API has been changed and update them accordingly to the uh, accordingly in your co code base. Okay, let's talk about what we learned during that process. Estimation. I cannot give you the ready-made solution for the estimation, but I can provide you some hints, like what you should consider uh, during the estimation process. Expect the unexpected during the development. So you can face some blockers, which has to be discussed and result with the highest priority. So consider the time for internal discussion and finding the solution. Remember about the time for unit and manual testing, especially when, it, when you have a lot of uh, scenarios to cover. Figma or documentation also can have some updates. So add some buffer for adjusting uh, the changes. Um, keep in mind that some components are more complicated than another. For the instance, uh, they can have more modes or code is more complicated. So apply correct buffer for that as well. Nobody is perfect, even Google. Don't worry if you made mistakes, the best do them too. On the right side, you can, uh, you can observe the fragment from the documentation saying that uh, navigation bar should not have less than, uh, saying not to use navigation bar for less than three destinations. And on the left side, you can see the real example from uh, Gmail or Contacts app with two tabs on the navigation bar. Documentation also indicates to not elevate the chip button when it's pressed. However, on, this, on the left side, when uh, we can observe the opposite of that. So I'm running the video and uh, notice that large files or videos buttons are elevating when the chip button is pressed. Well, which one is correct then? It's hard to say. Supporting uh, different themes, uh, schemes is hard. 
we are currently maintaining types for both versions at the same time. This led to many problems with paper detecting the right theme uh, for hooks and props used across the app. We also had to tweak our approach internally in places where we didn't want to have two separate uh, implementation for components. If you currently have snapshots and you are introducing new theme ver new version, take the advantage of a snapshot library. It can help you properly test differences in your components between versions, like let's say matching the different type properties, border radius, height, or similar. To facilitate the process of writing migration guide, I can recommend you adding the proper PR description with the list of changes like introducing, replacing, or renaming uh, deprecating new props or props. You can achieve it also by uh, introducing change sets library, which can help you with explaining what has been changed or what will be released. From that place, I would like to introduce you to the team. Without who, that process won't be possible. And I would li also like to thank you, that group of people. First of all, Daniel Szepanik, who is also a paper maintainer and helped me a lot during that, that process. Uh, thanks, Daniel, for your commitment and collaborative work and being open for my requests, even on the weekends. And <laughs> by, the, by the way, he's TypeScript masters. I'm just saying that in case you have some issues. Uh, Satya Jit Sahu, one of the two first paper creators. Uh, but currently known more as uh, React Navigation Master Expert Ninja. Uh, thanks for mentoring during that process and your patience when you are seeing notification on Discord with my next and next question. Uh, Ola Desmurslinczewska, Olimpia Żurek, Janek Jaworski, and Kevin Wersczyński. Thank you for the contributions. Yeah. Thank you for your contributions, your help with PR reviewing and testing and providing the valuable, valuable feedback. And thank you all for listening to me today.